Ah, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Today, uh, I'm going to share this paper, Deleterious Mechanical Deformations Like Mechanical Resilient Cancer Cell with Enhanced Proliferation and Chemo Resistance, written by Chi Tech Lim from MBI. So, cancer cells in secondary tumors are found to form metastasis more efficiently as compared to primary tumor cells. This is partially due to the unfa unfavorable microenvironment encountered by metastasizing cancer cells that result in the survival of a more metastatic phenotype from the original population. However, the law of deleterious, this is harmful mechanical stress in this change of metastatic potential is unclear. Here, by forcing cancer cells to flow through small capillary size constriction from 5 to 20 micrometer, it is demonstrated that mechanical deformation can select a tumor cell subpopulation that exhibited resilience to mechanical squeezing induced cell death. Transcritomic profile reveals unregulated proliferation and DNA damage response pathway in this subpopulation, which are further translated into more proliferative and chemotherapy resistant phenotype. This result highlights a potential link between the microenvironmental physical stress and the enhanced malignance of metastasizing, metastasizing cancer cells, which may be utilized as a therapeutic strategy in preventing the metastatic spread of cancer cells. So the concept is that they use microfluidic to flow cancer cells to select. So I will show you how they make it. <coughs> Using this microfluidic chips, they vary this size from 5 to 20 micrometer. Maybe five, uh, three, five, ten, twenty. Yes. And then they flow the cancer cell from this side to the other side. And then they stain with live and dead dye. And they count how much percent of live cell and what is the dead cell. And they found out that after deformation by this microfluidic constriction, the deformed cell can have more proliferative and resist the DNA damage. This is their concept. So let's see. Here one. So their concept is original cell have this heterogeneous cancer cell. But when after selection by this, when they experience this constriction through so 3 to 20 micrometer using microfluidic. And then they can select some of them that <coughs> the other ones survive. And then they perform again. And then they measure the cell survival rate after each deformation. So let's say from or actually original one, when they deform first time, this is first deformation. And when they check survival rate, at the deformation, 60% survive. <coughs> and this deformed cell, again, deformed. This is second deformation. And then from the original, this 100% come to 60%, this cell, and then again come to 50%, okay? And then when they calculate first deformation over second deformation, which is relative cell survival, the survival rate is around 75%. Yeah. First over second. Okay. So, which means that this first deformation, which is from original to first, <coughs> and this relative survival rate is first to second. Mm. So, the total survival rate, this total survival rate is decreasing over deformation but relative cell survivor is enhanced. Can you, can you understand? This is very important. Again, first deformation from original 100 to 60. And then the total form, from the 100, and second deformation, say 60, come to be 50. But when you calculate this relative survivability, because when, they, when you do the second deformation, you inject only 60. And then you can get 50. Right? So this comes to be around 80%. Mm. This is important. So they hypothesize that 
making a resilient cell, resilient means more flexible. They can, in, they can uh, resist certain mechanical force, mechanical resilient. They, this cell can survive. But mechanical sensitive cells, they are vulnerable. They are dead. Okay? So after experiencing this uh, flow constriction, they can expand the another next cell. This is called subpopulation S1. So there are many like ORI, original. Control, control means when this cell uh, experiencing 20 micrometer constriction as a control group. But when they do maybe three or five, uh, sorry. They perform okay. Anyhow, they select three or five micrometer, and then the next subpopulation is S1. Okay, so original means you know, without any deformation. The original one, original one, cell survival after deformation is around 25% for this cell line. But when they experience one time of mechanical selection by this 5 micrometer constriction, the relative cell survival comes to be 50, right? very high. And then other all cell line, except this cacao, caca, caco 2, and paca 2, paca 2 also have, have significant difference. But this H1650, caco 2, except that, all of them, most of them have selective for survival behavior after deformation. And then they do again and again and again, which means original one after first deformation come to be S1. Again, S1 deformed S2. Again and again. And when they check cell survival after deformation, original one is, as I mentioned, original cell. Control means when this cancer cell goes through 20 micrometer, which is not constrict the cell that much. But S1, 5 micrometer, let's say. 5 micrometer constriction. But as you can see, after first deformation, S1, S3, S7, almost similar. Okay. So they found out that multiple selection didn't show any enhanced of cell survival. One time is enough. Okay. Now what does it mean? When you imagine the metastatic cancer cell, the cancer cell should pass through very small, very small pore because most of the cancer tissue is very packed. When cancer cell, they, and then when they need to go metastasis, they have to go through this packed tissue microenvironment. Meanwhile, this cancer cell have experience about this mechanical constriction. They have to move, migrate to very small area, like three to five micrometer. This is their concept. And when you simply imagine, when cell are selected by this mechanical force, mechanical constriction, maybe this deformed cell can have different cellular behavior than original cell. You can simply imagine. That what, what, what kind of thing you can imagine? Metastasis cancer cell, they can more migrate, they can more cell survivor, they can have more adhesion, I don't know, maybe they have different behavior than primary cell. But we can say that they are more metastatic, more cancer cell, we can imagine, right? compared to the primary cell, primary cancer cell. The next, okay, they want to ask, okay, and then what kind of things are changed? Actually, they can check cytoskeleton or cell membrane things, but nowadays the concept is nuclear membrane protein because when some cell can go through very small pore, very important, and then contact, and then the heart material is nuclear membrane. Imagine yourself, you have to protect your brain. 
right? So in our body, also skull have one of the most hard material from all our all your body. So this lamin A C and lamin B1 is kind of skull for the human. So they have to protect their DNA. The other their leg and more other things they can broken, but they can survive. But this uh, nucleus they should preserve it. So they check lamin B1 and lamin A C and the hooks as a chromatin structure. When you can see, lamin B1, lamin AC, they are intact, certain spatial, but this spot, they are ruptured, which means lamin B1, they are losing their intensity. Lamin AC as well, what does it mean? This DNA is ruptured. So you can see this hoax is out of this lamin AC and lamin B1 boundary, okay? Which means these cells are dead. So this area, spatial distribution is depicted in here. Zero to eight distance, this part is this part. There, AC and B going down, while hoax is going up. Okay, they found out that some cells are experiencing this kind of lo loss of lamin AC and B. And meanwhile, this chromatin is going out of nucleus. This is the exact meaning of the mechanical force induced cell death. And then they found out what is the percentage. Nuclear, nu ruptured nuclear cell with that phenotype is similar between these two. Original and selected one have similar this phenomenon. Okay, they are similar. And then how they analyze further PI is, as you know, apoptotic cell marker. PI, when they are only stained, when, when the cell are ruptured, cell membrane, and when nucleus membrane is ruptured, this PI can be stained, which means that you, you have these four cells, but PI only stained the three. This white arrow means they are intact, okay? Why they are intact here? But when you look at this other cell, here, where you can see the rupture one, this side, right? Here, around AC is relatively intact, but B1 here and here, here ruptured, okay? And this one, here, here ruptured, okay? And then you can simply look at the lamin AC and B, you can see that, oh, some Lamin AC cell, lamin AC spatial distribution, where even though they are intact, the lamin B1 is lost in certain part, PI is stained, which means they are ruptured, nucleus ruptured. So they, under their mind, they found out might be compared to lamin AC, lamin B1 can be a major component for preserving the nucleus in their mind, and then. They check lamin AC intensity and the B1 intensity. Original one is without deformation. Yeah. Without deformation also, some cell can be dead. Because can, when you culture cancer cell, some cancer cells are continuously going die. So when they check dead, dead live cell, no difference. But when they're deformed by 20 micrometers as a control group, live cell have more lamin AC. And this Deform cell, when they are deform again, actually this S1 deform is, we can say this S2, right S2. Original deform is from original to S1. This is S1, we can, we can say that. S1 is like this, S2 is like that. But this, so sometimes laminase is enhanced, sometimes laminase is decreased, yeah, over the deformation. But when they take lamin B1, what happened? Live and dead cell, continuously live cell have more lamin B1 intensity. So we can conclude that from this D and E, e result, live cell can have more lamin B1 than dead cell while they are exper experiencing the deformation. So they are more narrowed down, they are going narrowed down this 
Lamin B1. So Lamin B1 protects mechanical resilient MCF7 from deformation induced nuclear rupture and cell death. And then next step is, as you can imagine, we have to we have to conform by Western blood. So Lamin A, C, Lamin B1. Lamin A also enhance. Lamin C little. But Lamin B1 is significantly like three or four fold change. Very a lot. Their, 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 intent, their protein level is enhanced after deformation. Okay? This is total form. Then when they knock down the Lamin B1 by cyanine, efficiency is around 80%. When they knock down Lamin B1, what happened? Original S1, when they are deformed, Original one also significantly decreased, while S1 also very significantly decreased. So we can say that Lamin B1 is very important for protecting the DNA, the, the nucleus. And then they culture 7 days and 28 days. They want to check when they deform, one time deform S1, and they culture, so, and they culture continuously for 7 days and 28 days, if they found out that lamin intensity is relatively maintained. S1 has more lamin B1 compared to original one. So this is not temper condition. When cells are experiencing deformation, their phenotype is totally changed. We are not sure the phenotype is changed epigenetically or like this one of the selection. Select the best cancer cell which can resist the mechanical force. They didn't say detail about this, but the one thing is that this S1 cell line is enough to analyze, to compare between original one and S1. So next, actually from this figure three, they are using MCF7 cell. So we what, what, what have to do that? We have to always generalize our concept. So for generalization, they use many type of cancer cells. This, 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 that. Important thing is that PI means DNA rupture. Can you see? But Lamin B1, especially this Lamin B1 highly expressed cell, they didn't show PI stain. Okay, here, here, you see, maybe decreasing Lamin B1 intensity can have PI stained phenomenon, while this intact, relatively intact B1 expressed cell, they don't have any PI stained. But in case of lamin AC, we cannot see this kind of tendency. Here, this is very high intensity, but this is ruptured. So lamin AC, we cannot see very clear difference between that cell, PI stained cell, and normal cell, non-PI stained cell. But in case of lamin B1, we can definitely say that lamin B1 is relative. And then, this is their quantification. Live without PI staining, dead with PI staining. Lamin B1 int intensity continuously increasing in live cell from all kinds of five cancer cells. And then they look at the lamin B1 intensity, the below quarter compared to others. When they sell, when this cell have lower lamin B1 intensity below quarter, their survival rate is 11 percent. Why? Upper three quarter has 60 percent. But when you divide like whom uh, lamin AC, low lamin AC level, high lamin AC level, lamin AC level, they don't have any, any preference. Okay. So this is the one way how how you show the lamin B1 is important than the lamin AC. And then this is their quantification. Yeah. All kind of cell, live cell, have low lamin B1 intensity. Yeah. And then next step is, OK, previously we knocked down the lamin B1. Here, we overexpressed lamin B1. What happened? Hypothetically, cell survival rate at deformation should enhance. Exactly they are enhanced. Right. We can confirm that. So the next one is they look at the nucleus area or perimeter or aspect ratio in, in detail. The first, they look at the, this 
uh, nucleus projected area dead and live cell from original to control. Control means 20 micrometer constriction. Original deformation, 5 micrometer constriction, S1. S1 is from S1 to S2. Okay? While they, when they look at the live and dead cell, dead cell have relatively higher nuclear project area. Okay. The nuclear parameter also relatively enhanced in dead cell. We can say that live cell can have relatively lower, smaller projected area and nuclear perimeter. But regardless of nucleus aspect ratio change, okay, what does it mean? When nucleus have smaller area, when you look at this wrinkling, so we can imagine when nucleus is suspended cell, they have many wrinkles. But once this cancer cell or any kind of cell are attached on the bottom, this wrinkling is spread, spreading. So that is why. But when you imagine this live cell have smaller area and smaller perimeter, which means that they have more potential to have wrinkling property. <laughs> Let's say two cells are there, dead and alive. A live cell have more wrinkling uh, which means that they are lamin B1 or lamin AC, they are more folded. More folded means that when they are stretched by this small pore, this folded membrane, nuclear membrane, can be expandable and then they are relatively safe. But already that cell, they, are, they don't have folding membrane, nuclear membrane, and then they are more stretched. And then when they are stretched again, they are ruptured. So they, actually, this phenomenon is already well known in other literature. So they exactly adapt this concept for their study. So yeah, and that, but interesting point is that, um, lamin, and when they look at uh, the e, uh, sorry, so the, when they live imaging the lamin B1 here, this exactly uh, without confirmation, okay? Before confirmation, we can see many wrinkling. When they have many wrinkling, which means that they have capacity to experience mechanical force induced deformation. So when they are deformed using macular fluidic, this folded lamin structure, they are expanded. Okay. So when this lamin, when this nucleus is more smaller area, and then they, they, they have more lamin B1 folded one. So this is four hour seeding and 24 hour seeding. Over, over time, this folded lamin B1 is more expanded, okay? So they show this concept and then they prove. So nucleus area from the adherent more area compared to suspended. But when they had S1, compared to the original one, they have more nucleus area and more nuclear parameter after selection. Yeah. So actually, so here, we can find out that after deformation, we can simply imagine the amount of the folding amount in nucleus membrane is a key for regulating this constriction induced cell death by nuclear membrane rupture. And then finally, original one and S1 have different nucleus perimeter and nucleus area, while lamin AC is, is enhanced. So actually, I have one question about this figure. So I can understand 100% about this. Here, they show that S1 has higher nuclear area, more lamin AC, and more perimeter. And when you actually, this adherence can be uh, maybe live cell. Actually, this adherent S1 is this original after deformation live one. And then this or original one is maybe similar to this. But this is higher than this. But this is opposite. So maybe actually they didn't describe detail about this why 
this tendency is opposite here. Yeah. Actually, I didn't 100% catch their idea, but their main concept is, anyhow, nucleus area change by deformation. So finally, they want to check after getting experience about deformation, what is the other cellular behavior? Over time, original, original deform, first time, second time deformation, cell number over, over time, the proliferation ratio is relatively decreasing. But when they look at the or original one and S1, S1 has more. Yeah, actually, this ori deform is uh, ori deform. This yellow color here. This is this one. Sorry, let's fix the number after seating. Sorry, uh, here original one have higher preparation compared to others, but when they look at the uh, original and S1, S1 has higher cell preparation rate. Ah, maybe this is right after deformed. Right after deformed, they are decreasing cell preparation compared to original one. But when they passage over seven days, they continue the passaging, and then their preparation rate is enhanced in S1 because time to first division is higher in after higher after deformation which means they have lower proliferation rate but after seven days continuous culture their original proliferate capacity is achieved after seven days later and then they they check their s1 which finally has higher proliferating ratio now when they check EDU after seven days of culture, EDU also confirmed positive cells are more detected in S1. And then, as you can imagine, so more cancer, more proliferated cancer cell when they are experienced so doxis, doxolubicin, one of the chemo attacker to kill the cancer cell, they are more against it. They have less toxic to this chemical DNA damage. So they found out that compared to S1, like original one, S1 and S7 relatively have higher cell survivor over different concentration of doxolubicin. And then confirmed by DNA damage marker, gamma H to AX. Gamma, to H, gamma H to AX is lower expressed in S1 cell and both high as well. So they found out that not right after deformation, but over seven days of culturing, they achieve enhanced proliferation and DNA damage repair ability in mechanical resilient cell. As a last, they want to connect this concept to the clinical study. So how they do? They found out that S1 Compared to original, S1 DG, differentially expressed gene, they collect up and down. Found out around 108 genes are changed in S1 cell compared to original cell. And then they depict this gene in terms of RFS is relapse free survivor, DMFS is distant metastasis free survivor, overall survivor. Anyhow, this all related to survivability. So, so they found out, so they have a TCGA or any kind of homepage. You can put certain gene, and then you can know this gene is related to the overall survivor or the left free survivor or other survivor. Maybe, let's say, if you put SOX2, SOX2 don't have any significant difference about this overall survivor, and they are ruled out. And then maybe Yap Taz, Yap, they have 0.3 p value, and then this is, they have some meaning. Okay, so like that, 
they depict their gene in these three, three category, and the over HR1 is significant difference. Now this black one is all three survivor is related to this gene. Is about this some integrin and fibronectin, nectin binding, and others. So here, proportion of genes with HR1 more have significant difference in up and down. So here, some genes are upregulated in S1, some gene is downregulated in S1, but both of them can have prognostic value. Okay, this is not one direction. Some genes, when they're highly expressed, they are harmful for the human. But some genes are downregulated, they can be harmful, right? So this is not one direction, but when from this total, DMFS, maybe 50 to 25, 30 to 20, this one, and RFS, almost similar. Now this is their, whole these genes, they have this value. And then, among, and then they do David analysis. They found out that from this gene set, nine genes are related to the cell division. So which means that cell division, cell cycles, and skeleton-related genes are all regulated in S1, which are meaningful for clinical value. And then this down, this focal region cell junction is down regulated in S1 cell. And these genes are also can also have prognostic value for this clinical survival. Okay? And we can say that this up genes is more has been occupied more in S1. And S1 is we can say more metastatic, right? So more metastatic proliferative cell can decrease the this overall survival. While Downregulated focal and cell junction genes in S1 can also have negative effect for overall survival. So we can say that uh, this is along with our base. Metastatic cells have more proliferating while they have less cell adhesion property because they have to migrate. They have to flow from this side to other side. When they strongly attach to certain side, they cannot move fast. Because of that, they have cell proliferative property as well as less focal cell junction. And then they relate primary tumor and metastatic tumor. And then from these 108 genes, they found out these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven genes are heavily involved to diagnose to do diagnosis for primary and metastatic cancer cell. This TGB beta 2, these five genes are less detected in metastatic cell, while these two genes are relatively higher detected in metastatic cell. So they want to link their previous uh, RNA sequencing data to ATCG or any kind of previously well known in silico data platform. Let's look at the supplementary. So this is uh, how they do the um, constriction. From five to 20 micrometer, uh, they continuously flow the cancer cell and they stain. And short time, long time, five, 20, maybe speed, and deformation, constriction. So that is why they're using five micrometer yeah, to have relatively higher cell number and then cell number compared to three. And then they change the pressure for changing the microfluidic. Depending on pressure, they change and then constant some value, velocity, and then pressure. And over time, they have this kind of 30 days. They're changing the cell survival deformation. Here, the cell diameter, total diameter doesn't change. Okay, this is how they do this cell. Approach, confined. 
large, medium, small. So when they change the microfluid that constriction, depending on the constriction, they have different cell, cell type. And then when they check entry time, entry T0 to T1, no change. And other cell survival after deformation, depending on their original confluency of the cancer cell. Sorry, this is not after experience the confirmation. This is how you control the original cell diameter depending on the cell confluency. This is 50% confluency, 100% confluency, cell can have different average diameter. But this average total diameter, they did not affect the deformation the survivor. So area and entry time. Mm. But this area and entry time, they have little correlation. More area, it takes longer time. It makes sense, okay? So they rule out the effect of the total cell diameter, okay? Then other cell line, this, this is from original cell, first, second, they go down. But when you imagine the cell survivor deformation, is, this is 78% reduction. This is 50% reduction. So we can say that for a deformate cell have more resistant, resistance. They check actin, and then here they go like this, and they cancer cell staining. Here they found out that some cell have this blabbing, right? Blabbing, in, in case of blabbing, they have very intake or lower lining beyond expression. So, so some cell I experience blabbing phenomenon. And then when they use the lamin B1, no lamin B1 protein, and then they confirm by this staining. When they check lamin AC, lamin B1, so what's, what is the main law of lamin AC, lamin B1? Lamin AC, like that, they're going down. Lamin B1, but lamin AC, you can see continuously lamin AC level is decreasing a little bit, right? From high intensity to low intensity. But in case of lamin B1, they didn't change. So that is why lamin B1 has a law to preserve the nucleus as a basic component. But lamin AC is more reactive, more responding to microenvironment. They are more flexible. But lamin B1 is more preserved, okay? So people already think like that. Lamin AC is more viscoelastic, elastic component, while Lamin B1 is a more more elastic component. So they check yeah, pronostic breast cancer cell. That they found out that when they check normal and tumor, and that this is a many cell line, most of the tumor cell have higher Lamin B1 expression. Lamin B1, Lamin B2, but Lamin A, uh, similar, right? So they prove Lamin B1 is more important to have prognostic value compared normal, between normal and tumor cell. So high in tumor, high in tumor, Lamin B1 too, Lamin A, almost similar, high, high in normal, tumor, no difference. Okay. And then when they do get the cells survival probability in case of lamin B1, lamin B2, high express tissue has lower survival probability. Mm. Lamin A compared to this upper, relatively similar. And then this is how they do the RNA sequencing. Original MCF7 and then S1 deformed cell. They do RNA sequencing and they find out this is change. Then their David analysis, they found out that the replication, mismatch, repair, some cell cycle, senescence, and repair related gene are more detected in GEO. Mm. 
So they bound up arm regular proliferation and DNA damage repair pathway in mechanical resilient MCF7 cell. And then they, using TCJ analysis, this metastatic primary one, okay? So they have 108 DEG. For 108 DEG, they, uh, they select the core express gene here. Uh, sorry, oh, like this. Mm. Here. Mm. Sorry, they select sorry one gene for 108 gene overlapping between the paired primary and metastatic tumor DG from TCJ BRCA cohort. You have 108 DG from your own RNA sequencing data. Now another like let's say 200 DG, which is which has differently expressed in tu metastatic tumor and primary tumor. They are all overlapping. They found us 31 genes. So they draw 31 genes here. So they are very dramatically changed between primary and metastatic. And this is their uh, sequencing data. And then when they look at the best, uh, best gene set, ah, and they use these 31 genes for calculating Elapsed free survival time and overall survival time. When this gene set is highly expressed, they have lower cell survivor. We can say that this gene set can be used as marker for prognostic value. We can diagnose diagnosis. We can diagnosis when some tissue are highly expressed or express this gene set. We can say that this tissue can have more metastatic manner. And then, similar thing, they can also use in vitro bacteria selection, in vitro metastatic selection for cancer cell. Oh. Here, uh, they use mm, DG, MD1, LM2, and S1. Okay. S1 is Deformed cell, LM2 is normal cell line, and they overlapping these two cells. That they found out that uh, without metastatic, with metastatic, they can show different life free life free survivor. So they continuously observe their finding gene set and then reported clinical prognostic value. Okay, so this is the end of this paper. So, do you guys have any questions? Okay, thank you.